talk about serialized attributes. Now, if you're on Postgres, and this episode really won't help you out too much. However, if you're stuck on SQLite or MySQL or similar, then serialized attributes can be really handy. While Postgres has a JSON data type, we really don't have any kind of uh, attribute column for MySQL or SQLite where we can have multiple attributes in that one column. So instead, with serialized attributes, what we're going to do is create a text column or text attribute on our table or model, and from there we can... um, store multiple values in a YAML format. So what we're going to do is let's just first create a uh, scaffold of users with two attributes, name, then we're going to create a properties of a text. So that's going to be a uh, large table where we can just put as much data in there as we want um, to a certain degree. So this is really going to be useful if you have situations where uh, you have a dynamic creation of profiles or features that really aren't an association of anything, but it's different kind of attributes or data about that uh, record that you need to store. And by doing this, we're going to be able to um, do that. Let's see. All right, so let's create our scaffold with our users and run rake db migrate. Once we have our database migrated, let's go into our user model. Then let's put serialize properties and of a hash. And this will allow us to store the or format the uh, attribute properties with the YAML format on our database. So from here, we can go into our view. And let's go into our form. So instead of just taking a normal text property here, what we want to do is we want to make it where we can uh, take in different fields. So for our example, let's say we want to get the Twitter handle and the GitHub username of the user, and that's the data that we want to store. Well, it's very easy to um, just have a Twitter handle attribute and a GitHub username attribute. Uh, This example is just for simplicity reasons while we're covering, but um, if you had a very dynamic application where you had a profile and that profile was assigned to a user, and from there you had uh, different types of settings depending on which rules were added to the profile, then serialized attributes could really come into handy. So we're going to get rid of this properties input, and we are going to paste this in. And I am using simple form. It's just the form builder that I like. So we're calling the simple form on our user, just like we normally would. But then we're calling simple fields for, if you're not using uh, simple form, then you would just do simple uh, f dot fields for. But I'm calling this on properties, and then I'm passing in p. So from here, I'm doing a p dot input, then the Twitter handle. Notice I do not have any um, attribute accessors in my model, but because I am referencing it off of the properties here, then these will just be different attributes within that properties um, serialization. So what this is doing is we're just passing in this uh, attribute, and then if the attribute is already set, then we are just going to call the at user dot properties and then pull that or fetch that Twitter handle or GitHub username. And this is just because my template is using Bootstrap and that's how I need to pass that in. So let's give this a shot. So let's uh, create a new user here. You know, I'll do my cobalts, cobalts, and let's just put it at there, cobalts. So the reason why we're not getting a property back, it did save it, but it was, if we look in our um, log here, it'll say unpermitted parameters properties. And that's because properties isn't just a single attribute, it's passing in a hash of attributes. So what we have to do in order to fix this is we have to go into our controller, and from within our controller, we can create uh, the necessary 
form for the properties. So um, one, the easiest way that you can do this is just uh, type it out. So our properties, we are passing in an array of the Twitter handle and then GitHub username. So doing that, it will, if we come back in here, you'll see that it's not there anymore, but we can then type it in and it will save it. So now we have an, uh, a JSON format here with the key Twitter handle at Cobalt, GitHub username, Cobalt. So let's take this a bit further. So what I want to do is um, maybe you're in a situation where you are using some uh, uh, different attributes on your properties attribute that are not necessarily always uh, the same or that you can really easily type out here. Um, and you want to make sure and be careful when you're doing what I'm about to show you here because you could run into situations where you're just opening up uh, your application for mass assignment. So you do want to make sure that when you are doing this, uh, you are taking necessary precautions. But what I'm going to do here is instead of passing in each one of my parameters, I'm just going to pass in the uh, user attributes array here. And let's define that method. And what this is doing is we are passing in the parameters. We are getting an array here. Uh, I just have a array of the property fields that I want to use. And then uh, we're passing in attributes, uh, the name, and then properties of the property fields. So this way that we have it here, and let me just roll this back so I could just comment out that first line. So this is the same thing that we had, uh, but it's going to just uh, do the same thing, but it's separating it out so you will be able to um, change it around if you need uh, to make it a lot more dynamic or do other special uh, restrictions around specific attributes. So we can take this actually a step further. So uh, we can take our property fields and get rid of this and get rid of this property fields, but now we need to pass in an array of the options. Well, what we can do is we can just take the, uh, from our parameters, we can take all the fields that we received. So we'll just set an empty array. We'll take all the parameters and just loop through the key and the properties. And if the key equals properties, then we're going to put the keys into our properties field array and then we're going to assign it here. Um, now again you want to make sure that you're very careful when doing this because uh, this will take all of the properties keys so our Twitter handle and GitHub username and just blindly throw it in and allow it to be saved. So um, there are situations where you do want this kind of uh, behavior but there's also some situations where you do not want this. So just uh, definitely be cautious and um, make sure that you're not opening up your application to a uh, big vulnerability. That should not be there. It should be there. Let's just try testing this out. It changed it, updated, so we know our uh, new form is working well. So uh, the last bit I want to cover is, let's say if we want to go into our table now, and instead of seeing uh, the table where it's just pretty ugly like that, what we can do is pull in the different attributes. So let's just create those in a column here. I'll just paste in this code. And all we're doing is we added two new columns, the Twitter and GitHub. And now we have a uh, user.twitter handle, user.github uh, user. Now that's not exactly true because what happens here is it does the serialized attributes does not just magically create our Twitter handle and our GitHub username. Instead, we have to call user.properties and then the uh, Twitter handle and then the GitHub properties username. This is how we will have to call it in order for it to work. So there's our Twitter handle in our GitHub. However, let's say if we do want to uh, know and we know that our um, 
forms are carefully constructed. We know that our inputs are uh, user input, so they shouldn't be trusted, but we know the structure of our application is sound, so we want to create a singleton method where we can access our properties, so it just kind of cleans up the code a bit. You don't have that, um, have to call in the properties and from there pull the key, Twitter handle, or GitHub username. So within our user model, we can actually create a after initialize and then pass through our different properties that we want to um, create methods for. And then, so here we're just looping through Twitter handle and GitHub username, uh, looping over the variable property. We're defining a singleton uh, method property, and then we're calling from the properties the property. So doing that, we can actually go back into our form and uh, or our table here, and instead of calling user out properties Twitter handle, we can call it just like this. So let's go back to our application and hopefully it looks like nothing changed. All right, so there it is. Now there are um, some other things that you can do to extract the properties and uh, you know really organize it better, but this is just really a rough example of how you can use serialized attributes in your database. Now, if you are using Postgres, again, there is a JSON data type that's available to you uh, that handles the uh, uh, the serialized attributes a lot nicer, but if you are stuck on MySQL or SQLite, then this is a great episode um, for you. All right, that's all for this episode, and thank you for watching.